Hello beautiful beings, this is Maruma Tu and you are watching Sun Soul Astrology and this is the daily planetary translation for May the 11th 2017 and today we are still in the full moon energy of Scorpio and we're vibing on a lot of the same vibration but today the collective moon has stepped to 21 degrees of Taurus and at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time 1900 Universal Time the moon is going to be at one degrees of Sagittarius and you know the most interesting thing is that today in Mercury's post shadow moving back through the sign of Aries and you know this conjunction that's been going on so long with Uranus um, you know both of them have stepped to be 26 degrees today so we are now back in this incredibly intense um, you know vibration coming from the quantum realm you know all of this authentic rebellious energy all this innovative thought all this you know brand new open mind expansion of thought and communication is just really blazing in through us all and it's just activating the hell out of this fire trying because you know saturn is at the galactic center at 26 degrees and it's all trining over to you know the fixed royal star regulus 29 degrees of leo it is technically at zero degrees of virgo now but um, it just was at 29 degrees of Leo for thousands of years, so it's hard to um, switch the gear on it. So, you know, again, our destiny is charged. It's charged to break the status. It's charged to think on a higher level of consciousness. And, you know, Mercury, again, I keep talking about the alchemy that's really, you know, being energized through the chart right now. So our thoughts are very much alchemized into that higher vibration and saturn wants us to get a whole different perspective so um you know again this full moon in scorpio it was very very strong definitely brought up a lot of shadows for people definitely brought in a lot of light for others and you know whenever the light shines on the darkness it illuminates those parts so that we can transform them and we can change them so if you didn't happen to see yesterday's video for the full moon, I would recommend that you go ahead and you take a look at that again because really everything that was going on yesterday is pretty much what's happening today. The sun and moon are still in an opposition and we are still in the full power swing of everything and the moon is still in a trine to Chiron and Venus here as it moves into Sagittarius. And let me tell you, the moon is actually going to enter into Sagittarius this morning at about 9.59 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, okay? And it will be here until May 13th at 10.37 p.m. Pacific Standard Time as well. And you know, um, we're kind of marinating in these energies big time. Uh, really figuring out what it means for us. What does it mean for us to go into those shadows and dig out those parts of ourselves that we kind of long tucked away? You know, maybe um, all of this Uranus Mercury vision is just showing us what we missed before big time because, you know, again, Mercury was retrograde, Venus was retrograde. These are both moving back through their shadows in their direct forward position and um so this is like a little bit of a review you know it's a review with a different perspective and you know um again uranus is just all about unique and different and abstract and shockingly so it's like whenever you flip the script so hard that you just surprise the shit out of yourself and nobody saw it coming right so whenever we look at things from that type of perspective, we can really see what needs to be fine-tuned. And this is the sign of Aries that we're talking about that Uranus and Mercury are. And Aries is the I am that I am of the chart. It is the cardinal fire. So it is the one that gets it 
moving, you know, that charge and that surge in the forward direction of the independence of the self. So we are finding what it means to be sovereign beings, you know, sentient sovereign beings who understand that there's so much more to everything that we consider to be life, that there's so much more that we weren't told, and there's so much more that we have to experience and that we don't need to fear the great unknown, that this is all like this, you know, mermaid soup of ingredients that we're all just like kind of putting together and we're all blending and it's kind of exciting, you know, because Chiron is having such you know, an activation as well of uh, let's just do it and heal this shit already. You know, Saturn squaring it has been making it really apparent to us what our wound is. And sometimes our wounds are what we actually feel very comfortable doing. Almost always what we feel most comfortable doing. And it's, you know, the irony of life and the idiosyncrasies of everything. But whenever we go into those parts that are expansive and offer us healing they're not very comfortable you know so it's breaking patterns and chiron represents a pattern that is not constructive for you it's not useful it doesn't benefit you and we're all basically really seeing what that is you know venus is in a square also right and trining the moon so actually let me just double confirm Venus is no longer in the square to Saturn. It was forever, right? I'm just uh, reflecting on the past, I guess. So, you know, with the moon trining to Venus, though, that's a really nice, harmonious balance of, you know, our emotions getting this vision of something better, you know, for ourselves. It has to do with our self-love. And whenever you go through the deep shadow work of Scorpio, you certainly come out stronger you know, and you come out with a higher level of respect for yourself, you know, so I definitely encourage us all to really, you know, take use of these energies, and a lot of people are just going to need to really do a lot of, you know, resting and dreaming during this time, full moons can be incredibly intense for some people, and just the literal draining of the battery, you know, so you have to definitely recharge, and just take it slow and not push yourself. Don't expect yourself to go out and conquer the world right now whenever you are definitely conquering your inner world, right? So we're actually gonna go ahead and jump straight into the degrees for today. And 21 degrees of Taurus is a statue of Hermes decked with brightly colored garlands. Hermetic wisdom revealed two extreme polarities, the far inside and far outside, expressively playful, tricky, fluent, and engaging, inwardly contemplative, studious, broadening, and lost to the world, guiding from within to stay entirely secluded and solitary in your inner life, yet transmuting your Solomonites into accessible bits and pieces in all familiar contexts, a way to render unto Caesar and still serve the highest, an arduous track, the ultimate challenge to throw the self off and take the self on as it is, as it is appropriate, strategic incarnation under special assignment. And I absolutely love this degree as I was mentioning uh, my north node and Taurus in the second house is basically that 20, 21 degrees. And so this, you know, full moon happened on my south node, right? <clears throat> and uh, definitely a time for me to connect with past ancestry, past life connections, all of that that's brought me to this life, this incarnation and what it is that I'm doing, right? To meet my destiny point once again, <clears throat> excuse me, with the node shifting, right? So, um, what I love about this degree right here is that it is super on the whole point of what we've been talking about, about the hermetic wisdoms, right? And um, going back to Thoth and all of the secret society, you know, all the indoctrinations into the secret wisdoms that were, you know, really for the ones, again, who have eyes that can see 
And so this just really brings it back to that statement once again that the hermetic, hermetic wisdom revealed two extreme polarities, far inside and far outside. And you know, um, here's the biggest secret about alchemy that people did not realize for the longest is that all alchemy that had to do with the elements, you know, turning lead into gold and, you know, all of the other alchemical processes that dealt with actual, you know, um, chemicals in the laboratory transmuting things into other elements from the periodic table was literally a code for transmuting energy within yourself. And so that's why it said that it only is for those that have eyes to see because, you know, only those will actually get it. And so that's the extreme two polarities, far inside and far outside. Expressively playful, tricky, fluent, and engaging. And that's a whole nother way. I mean, they use the most intense and um, relevant pictures and drawings to express all of this hermetic wisdom, you know, the, the use of planetary, planetary energies, um, the use of the elements, the base metals, and also, you know, the elements, earth, air, fire, water, and the modalities, right? The cardinal, um, the mutable, all of that, like it all goes hand in hand, but you have to have to be fluent in this language because everything is playful and everything is tricky. <laughs> So inwardly contemplative, studious, broadening, and lost to the world. Yeah. Um, you know, whenever we do take that time to meditate inwardly and see everything from a different perspective, then what we are told, you know, we have to be free thinkers. We have to be um, someone that has our own opinions. You know, and we have to trust ourselves enough that we have um, this connection going on with ourself and the cosmos that we can, you know, expand ourselves and share these ideas and cultivate wisdoms that are past what we know at the present moment. So, guided from within to stay entirely secluded and solitary in your inner life, let yet transmuting your Solomonites into accessible bits and pieces in all familiar contexts. Yeah, you know, oddly enough, this um, line right here reminds me of, you know, like the Freemason society and how, you know, they have basically um, transmuted their Solomonites into bits and pieces of all familiar contexts in the symbolism that's spread across our world and you know guided from within to stay in, entirely secluded and solitary you know are those secret brotherhoods and everything like that the secret societies that have held this wisdom away um but also you having this knowledge as well you know it's not like those who really know go screaming it from the mountaintops because they you know it's very much said that you can't cast pearls in front of swine so you can definitely read, you can definitely try to learn, but you'll never understand if you don't really do the supreme work to get deep into those levels that connect you to a place where you go beyond, you know? Like it just won't ever reveal itself. So that's what we're getting to is this way, you know, as it states here, this way to render onto Caesar and still serve the highest an arduous task you know <laughs> it really is like we're here we're still a part of this society but we're trying to find a way to make our service to the highest source of creation um an expression via our highest source expression i hope that makes sense you know we're all honoring from this place and it should be our most true authentic and pure vibration you know and we have to discover what is beyond to discover what is within and vice versa again you know as above so below as below so above as within so without as without so within you know it's just such a full circle it, it encompasses everything it really is 
the ultimate challenge to throw the self off and take the self on as it is appropriate. Yeah, you know, this is that going back over everything, shining that light into the shadows, accelerating and elevating past where you were yesterday, you know, admitting where you saw those parts that um, weren't so obvious to you before. And you know what? It's totally okay because, um, yeah, it's easy to miss a lot of clear um, truth whenever it's just muddy and, I mean, gone from society, really, you know? And so we've had to take these steps to get back. You know, that's why the state's strategic incarnation under special assignment. And, you know, like I'm a walk-in, I connect heavy with that statement, right? And we all are basically, you know, if you watch my channel, you are most definitely a, a strategic incarnation under special assignment. And that's why we're here growing into something much more, much more, so much more. <clears throat> and what a perfect time to do it than the full moon in Scorpio, right? So let us read the zero, no, one degrees of Sagittarius where the moon is going to be still vibrating on this full moon energy. Um, <clears throat> it is a woman manalist and solid gold chains. Vividly attached to your own personal limitations, idiosyncrasies, and karmic blockage, you are identified within the strict circle of familiar difficulties, dilemmas, issues, and problems, habitual to a thick atmosphere of being surrounded and enveloped by all the places you have hung out before, immobilized in your will and truly feeling incapable of overthrowing the past. You feel chaotically fantasized, fascinated, by and deeply saturated in patterns, syndromes, and subconscious escapes. Yet, in the fiery mist of this very enchantment, you can, go, you can go free if you inwardly come to a place where all the old spells no longer work and your resurgent spirit simply refuses to confound itself any longer. Wow. Um... This is intense, you know, because this is exactly what the representation of the full moon has really been all about, you know, all of these personal limitations that we've been so attached to, the idiosyncrasies of society and government, you know, the karmic blockages that we've, you know, uh, accumulated and also placed upon ourselves, try to place upon others, you know, and now are identified in the strict circle of the difficulties and the dilemmas, the issues and the problems, like all, you know, binding with these Manalist gold chains. And it's funny because you know what? Way back in the day, um, whenever they say that the Anunnaki came here to mine gold, <clears throat> they made gold in ancient Egypt included out of everything. Like they say that they even used gold, solid gold chains to enslave people, you know, tweezers and like literally nothing wasn't made out of gold. That's pretty crazy. But this is a statement because what we put value on, you know, from these lower dimensional perspectives can really create us to be locked up in chains. And it's like this wheel. So this is really like that Chiron expression. And again, the moon is trining Chiron and Venus here at this degree. So we have a ton of supportive potential to um, heal this aspect, right? Because the habituated to a thick atmosphere being surrounded and enveloped by all the places you've hung out in forever is like, you know, Chiron again, you know, that comfort zone. That is that habitual thick atmosphere of where you've hung out forever. And it's like, it's cozy and it's familiar and you know it and it holds you the fuck back. It doesn't encourage you. It doesn't stimulate you to go farther or push harder or become sh like stronger, new, you know? Like the things that scare the fuck out of you are the things that just make you like Oh my gosh, like surge with this creation energy to just see what's out there. 
You know, that totally fucking epic great unknown. It's like literally jumping into a black hole. I mean, damn, that's like on my bucket list. It really is. But immobilized in your will and truly feeling incapable of overthrowing the past. And wow. Yeah, that is just Chiron, Chiron, Chiron. <laughs> immobilized in your will and feeling incapable of overthrowing the past is because you are living in fear. And so this is definitely the day to release the fear. You know, do not fear these things. The only thing that you have to lose is the fear, okay? The anxiety, the worry, you know, like the smaller casing of self, right? You feel chaotically fascinated by and deeply saturated in patterns, syndromes, and subconscious escapes. Well, you know, so this is why we have to continue to change our habitual thinking patterns. This is why we have to continue to change our daily habits, you know? I've talked about this in the past, that we have to do these things slowly whenever we are, you know, reprogramming our subconscious so that we're not constantly pulled back into this regressive loop. You know, if you drive the same way to work every day, drive a different way, you know, change your coffee cup. Don't drink out of the exact same coffee cup every day. You know, but still, meanwhile, put your old one right in front of your face so you have to be forced to make a new choice. Like, keep making at least one or two new choices a day that force you to break your muscle memory that's in your mind and your body. Like, it actually takes work to drive a different direction to work because we just go on autopilot. And when we're in autopilot, we're thinking and we're not in the present moment. Okay, so yet in the fiery midst of this very enchantment, you can go free if you inwardly come to a place where all the old spells no longer work and your resurgent spirit simply refuses to confound, your, confound itself any further. And this is so great because, yes, whenever we do do the hemi sinking, whenever we connect that left and right side of the brain, we go into super consciousness and then we go into super learning, okay? This is whenever we break all of those old spells that we've been placed under, all of those lies that we've been told and that we've told ourselves and that we've told others. This is whenever we can be free and, you know, go have that resurgent spirit reborn. You know, Scorpio is about death and rebirth. You know, we are the phoenix who's rising from the ashes. You know, this is our time as the 144, as the three waves of volunteers, as the ones who are here to change the fate of this planet by changing the vibration. You know, the Schumann resonance is rising. If you don't know what the Schumann resonance is, it's the frequency vibration of planet Earth. Okay? It has been acceleratingly getting higher in its vibration for about the last like 12 years or so ish, you know? And just in the last few years, it took like a gigantic leap forward. And it's really an amazing thing because we've never had that before. The Earth resonated at the same frequency for almost ever. Okay, that Schumann resonance almost seemed to be a fixed vibration. But as consciousness has been awakening, as we have all been doing the work and becoming more stable in our vibration, we have actually been raising the vibration of our own planet. Our work on a planetary level, on a galactic level, is not going unnoticed, okay? So... Definitely continue to enjoy these next couple days and just relax, you know, just really relax today. Be, be good to yourself, you know, like kick back, unplug, make some tea, you know, light some candles, hold some crystals, <laughs> burn some incense like the whole nine yards, you know, watch a movie, just kind of like soothe your planetary self. 
Just do something a little bit different. And let it all process because we've been going through so many like DNA upgrades, you know, all these cosmic downloads and then all those portals that open and then boom, the full moon. And it's a lot for this physical body to process. It's a lot, okay? And then not that long ago, we had a lot of solar flares. It kind of feels like it's happening right now again. Um, so we might really be, I'll have to look into that. But whenever we do, we really have to just chill, okay? Because our flesh suits have some limitations, right? And they need some tender, loving care. So I wish you all the best day ever. Um, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for joining me and everyone that watches. Um, I love all of you. I do do readings. I am doing a Pluto retrograde reading right now for the retrograde season going until September 29th. And I take a look at the age in which Pluto is placed for you. I look at it in reference to your natal, your progressed, and your draconic charts. I do do draconic chart readings also. Those are um, the chart of your oversoul before you incarnated. I do natal along with progressed at the same time. I do walk-in charts if you are a soul that has walked into an adult body as far as reincarnation goes. Um, you know, new, uh, solar returns, lunar returns. I do coaching for RH negative blood and also walk-ins. So I have a whole list. You can definitely find everything in the show more button below in the information section. And you can book on my schedule. You can connect to my PayPal through there. And we can, you know, have a Skype video conversation and meet in person and vibrate and translate the planets for you. And I am so grateful once again, continuation of the happy full moon in Scorpio and job bless. Right Absorb my life, let me illuminate you. Close your eyes, can you hear my voice? Whisper.